mean to be a good candidate for LASIK? Or were you told you can't have LASIK because you're a poor candidate? If you want to know the answer to these questions and more, keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye surgery, eye health, eye makeup health, and a little bit about my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, please hit that like and subscribe button so you can follow along and get these videos as soon as I make them. All right, let's get back to LASIK. What exactly does it mean to be a good candidate or a poor candidate? I know we throw these terms around and sometimes it's not really fully explained. So who is LASIK for? Well, it is FDA approved in this country for anybody over the age of 18. That being said, usually we don't like to operate on anyone unless typically they're 21 or even in their mid 20s. And the reason for that is your glasses and contact lens prescription, it has to be stable for at least one and a half to two years before you have LASIK because we don't wanna to try to hit a moving target. That is not ideal. If you're young and you have LASIK and your eyes are still changing as they often do because people get more and more nearsighted, especially with school and devices and all the kinds of things that are going on now, then that means you might have to have a touch up down the road. And that's not what anybody else wants. Number one, it's expensive. Number two, it's more surgery. So that's why most eye surgeons are going to prefer that you're a little bit older before having LASIK. Now, I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist. I do not do LASIK surgery on children. And so subsequently, I don't do LASIK surgery at all, but my husband does and we do a lot of it in our surgical center. Now, LASIK is good for treating up to 12 diopters of myopia or nearsightedness, six diopters of astigmatism, and six diopters of hyperopia or farsightedness. And with LASIK, what you're doing is actually cutting a flap in the cornea and then using a laser also to apply to the bed of the remaining tissue to basically remove extra corneal tissue to change the way that light gets bent when it's entering your eye so it can focus on the retina instead of in front of the retina as often happens with nearsighted individuals. So even though LASIK is approved all the way up to a minus 12, most of the time we can't do that. And the reason for that is the amount of normal or healthy corneal tissue there has to be a little bed of good tissue for you to be able to see clearly after the surgery. The cornea is important. It's the clear dome-shaped covering of your eye and it's essential for good vision. If we're taking too much during LASIK because you're so, so nearsighted and we need to remove a big amount, then it might just not be possible for you to have LASIK. And an alternative refractive laser surgery may be PRK or the EVO ICL, where I just done a video on that with Joe Jonas. You can check that out. That might be better for you. So what makes someone a poor candidate for LASIK? What makes them not be someone that's ideal for LASIK surgery? Eye surgeons always want you to have the absolute best outcome. So your LASIK surgeon is going to be looking at people and judging, is this person going to have a really perfect result? Because they don't want you to pay cash, go through the surgery and it's not an ideal result for you. So because of that, people that have very dry eyes are not good candidates. And the reason is LASIK can make your eyes even more dry. And that might not seem like a big deal, but let me tell you, it is a huge deal. People who have worse dry eyes after LASIK surgery, they are miserable, like miserable. And dry eyes affects the quality and the clarity of your vision as well. You can have glare, you can have halos, all from the dryness. So if you have really severe dry eyes going into LASIK, your surgeon is going to say you're not a good candidate for this surgery. If you have an active autoimmune disease, then likely you're not going to be a good candidate for LASIK as well. You know, there's a lot of things that are going on when you have uh, autoimmune diseases like Sjogren's or lupus, or even rheumatoid arthritis. First of all, you're probably on an autoimmune medication and those can be quite serious. And with the inflammatory state, that's just not a chance that surgeons want to take. Again, you're not going to have a great results, so it's not going to be recommended. If you are pregnant or breastfeeding, you who are also not someone that should have LASIK. Typically, I recommend to my patients that they wait at least six months 
after stopping breastfeeding to get evaluated for LASIK surgery. And that's because during pregnancy and when you're breastfeeding, everything is changing in your eyes and your refraction, your glasses and contact lens prescription can also change because there's a laxity in everything just as you know you know your body changes during pregnancy so it's the same kind of thing so we expect stability in your measurements and that's just not possible with when you're pregnant or when you're breastfeeding if you're on accutane you're also not a good candidate for lasik and again there's a whole video i did on accutane because it's really changing the character of your tears and it can make your eyes super super dry so after you discontinue Accutane for a certain number of months, you gotta work on that with your dermatologist, then you may be able to have LASIK, but certainly not while you're still on Accutane. And as I mentioned, if you are younger than 21 years of age, or if you are someone whose prescription has been changing, it's been getting worse every single year, you're not a good candidate. We need stable measurements for at least one and a half. Some surgeons even prefer two years before operating. So those are the things that we look for, the criteria for LASIK surgery. And it's just so that you have an absolutely optimal outcome. There are other types of surgeries that can get rid of your glasses or contact lenses. So your surgeon will likely recommend those for you instead. So take heart, it does not the end of the road just because you're not a good LASIK candidate. There's other things you can do. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this video. Make sure to drop a comment below if you've had LASIK, you love it. If you had dry eyes before and still had LASIK, I'd love to hear from you. Did you have awful dry eyes after as well? I wanna hear everything. So put it in the comments below. I read every single one. If you have any other topics you'd like for me to discuss, drop those in as well. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.